Okay, welcome to the second Lime Mountain Studio video tutorial. This tutorial we're going to learn how to program our own beats using the Ableton Live instrument Impulse. You can use other Ableton Live instruments such as drum rack or external VST units. However, Impulse is a pretty fun one to start with. So let's go. All right, so from the very, very beginning, here I am on my desktop and I want to open the Ableton Live program. How do I do that? I'm on a Mac, so I usually just go down here to my dock where all my programs are and I would find the Ableton Live icon. Click on that, the program will launch. If that's not the case on your computer, I'll just simulate that by getting rid of that icon. You'd want to open up a new finder window by pressing Apple N. And then there in your applications or down on the left in applications, they're both the same. You'll be able to scroll down to L and live. There it is, the same icon. If you double clicked on that, the program would launch. What I'd prefer to do is just drag it right down here to the dot, wiggle it around, make some room. And there it is, forever more to be used as a shortcut. So just click there, it bounces up and down, and it's going to open. If you're using a PC, then you'll want to go to your desktop and right click. Then you can select New, Shortcut, and then you can press the Browse button and find the program that way. Okay, so we've opened up Live. Now this is pretty normal. They create two tracks for us. One is an audio track and one is a MIDI track. What is the difference? Basically, don't worry yet you're going to be using MIDI to program beats. You're going to be using MIDI to program synthesizers, bass lines and other things like that. Eventually we're going to get onto audio to use sampling um, and recording in vocals etc. But for the moment all you really need to know is when we use Impulse we're going to be using the MIDI track. So to load the impulse machine we're going to go up here to that square within a circle now this is where all of our tools are in this finder window on the left so impulse is inside of instruments i opened that up by just pressing on the triangle and now all i need to do is drag and drop this into the midi track now when I do that, notice that as I hover over the MIDI track, the icon changes underneath my arrow. That's because it's saying I belong here. If I hover it over the audio, it's got this kind of sign come up. So if I hover it here and drop it, it's really happy. Notice that the name of the track has changed to reflect the instrument that's inside it. And we can see it down here, that's all of its controls. If you ever lose sight of this window because you've sort of clicked somewhere else, then all you need to do is just double click on Impulse and that will come back. At the moment it's a pretty empty drum machine. I'm pressing play in all of these sample windows and nothing's happening. So our next step is to load drum samples inside of it. I keep my drum samples in the number one folder here. So I'm just going to browse through my samples by pressing these triangles again to open and close folders. Inside the kick, I'm just gonna have a listen to these. It's kind of like shopping, like what, what kick do I want for this song? Um, if you don't have the, the blue here on this headphone symbol, the previewing won't be enabled, so make sure that's blue and similarly check the level. This blue icon over here is the level of your preview, so that can be really loud or it could be something a lot more pleasant like that. Alright, so I've chosen that kick. To put it in impulse, all I need to do is click and drag and drop just wherever in here. I wanted it in the first one because that's where I like to have kicks. You can put it wherever you want. Now, searching for a good snare. 
dragging and dropping, adding some percussion. dragging and dropping and then let's add a few synthesized sounds maybe so now we have five we've got five samples here as I press A the meters are bouncing which means it's all playing through that track it's great we have three more little slots here that um could be used we could have up to eight but let's not get greedy it's our first time so we're going to stick with five so all we need to do now is set the tempo and then program in a beat so live defaults to 120 beats per minute which is quite fast and we can see where the tempo is set up in this corner square here it says 120 if you're doing hip hop, you might want to start with 90 and then move from there if you want it faster or slower. So I've just clicked there where it says 120 and I'm going to type in 90 and then press enter. And now we've got 90 beats per minute or 90 BPM. To give that a listen, I'm just going to press here on what is the metronome. It goes yellow. And then if I press play or spacebar, I can hear that tempo. That metronome is not part of your beat. It's kind of like somebody clapping along, clicking along to help you to help you keep time and it's a, it's a reference tool, I guess. So if I type in 150 now, you get a sense of how that metronome speeds up to show you what the tempo is. So I can turn it off at any time just by pressing on that square again and because it's not yellow it means it's off. Now to program in a beat I'm just going to double click here under impulse and I've created an empty clip. If I press play nothing happens that's how empty it is so I'm going to be drawing beats into this bottom area here now at the moment that's really small and a bit squashy so I'm just going to make that window bigger if I hover my mouse around this black line here and my mouse arrow becomes that icon it means that I can click and drag and just make that whole window a lot more comfortable to work in that is so much more fun to work in this window now I really don't recommend working in it when it's smaller to create a beat I'm just going to turn that metronome on again to create a beat all we need to do is just double click somewhere and something will start to happen Notice I'm clicking in this line here that belongs to the kick. So every time I create a beat, it says kick on it. That's the name of my sample, kick number three. If I double click where the snare is, I can create snare beats. Just going to turn that down so I can speak over the top. And then just start to add some percussion where I feel like I want it. Again, just double clicking in these axes where I want the beats to go. Might turn that metronome off. Now I've got enough of a beat. All right, so that's a super crash course introing beat making by drawing it in. So basically just going over that. Whenever we want to create a beat, we can double click. We can double click again to get rid of it. Or you can just select it by clicking it and then press delete or backspace on your keyboard and it'll also disappear. You can press Apple Z or Control Z at any time to undo what you've just done. 
And some other handy things to know are to extend a beat, you might want to hover on the corner there until your mouse becomes a square bracket and then you just click and drag to expand that beat and then drag back in the other direction to make it smaller again. You might want your beats to be even smaller than that. At the moment we're working in 1 slash 16 which means that we can only fit 16 of these babies in a bar. Now you might want to go to 32 of those so you can right click if you're on a PC or with a Macintosh you'll just hold down the control button that's CTRL on a laptop and then click and that menu will also come up. If you just go to 132, click, now you can see we can create much smaller beats. So let's give that a listen. It can allow you a lot more flexibility. Now, Whenever I select a beat, I can also adjust its velocity. So just grab this little line here below it that's also highlighted and drag it down and that decreases the loudness. Now you can see that is a very pale looking beat. Just creating a kind of a a fade up here by gradually increasing the velocity and then decreasing. We can have a listen to this. So that allows you to really play with the dynamic and make a bit more of a sophisticated beat. The good news is that programming a beat is the same for all drum machine instruments in Ableton Live. So now that you know how to draw in a beat in Impulse, you'll be able to do that in Drum Rack as well and other instruments. Now we're going to continue with Impulse in the next tutorial too, to look at playing in the beats using the computer keyboard or a MIDI piano keyboard. And as well, we're going to learn how to use the controls within Impulse as well to produce our beats so they sound even better.